All right, welcome to the Buddy Ball Podcast. I'm Bob, my co-host is Ty. Our podcast is about all things BBI. Today we're going to speak with Jesper Rongard, who is the owner and founder of Navigar Yachting. So Jesper, uh, thanks for joining us today. Uh, why don't you give us a little background? How'd you, uh, how'd you get into boating? Hey guys, yeah, thanks. Thanks for having me on today. Um, so I got into boating uh, when I was actually... Uh, an exchange student. So I'm a Swede living in Sweden uh, normally, and I moved over to St. Pete, Florida a few years back. But uh, already in my high school years, I was sailing, uh, I was spending a year in uh, New Orleans, and I was uh, sailing on, on Lake Pontchartrain. So that's actually where I where I first started sailing. Interesting. Oh, wow. Good Cajun food. <laughs> Yeah, really good Cajun and, and, and some pretty good sailing too. So that got me interested and, and uh, yeah, and later on I've had a lot of chances to, to, to grow that interest. So do you grow up, uh, so you say you're Sweden, where'd you grow up? From Sweden. So I grew, <laughs> I grew up, yeah, Thanks, I grew Bob. up in Sweden. <laughs> okay, you grew up in Sweden, that makes sense. <laughs> I, I, I grew up in Sweden, but I, I did that exchange year. And, and basically, so when I was doing my university studies, I was working as a skipper in Greece, and and that kind of you know put me through through the university years, and I had you know had the the, the time of my lifetime. So, um, that's where I first got introduced to the industry. So, what was it like sailing around Greece? Oh, so that was awesome, man! I just I just realized that that was the the best way to spend a holiday. I, I just realized because everybody that I was sailing with, they would all tell me after a week that that's the best trip. That they've ever done so i you know i was hooked from from the first moment and and being a swede i was used to sailing in you know cold waters and i mean except for lake Pontchartrain, which was warm but once i got back to sweden it was all cold and it wasn't that exciting and getting down to greece it was just fantastic with the warm weather and fantastic islands and just the beauty of nature and just a great way of spending your time so what do you think's your your uh best boating memory Oh, best boating memory. That's a hard one. I've spent so much time on the water. Um, but if I, if I got to pick one, I guess I met my, uh, my wife back in 98. Good, good answer, by and... the way. <laughs> Safe answer. I don't know where you're going with it, but it sounds good. <laughs> yeah, I thought so. <laughs> but uh, so uh, I, was a, I was working as a skipper uh, a little bit still at the time, and, and uh, I had a, a chance to, to bring a boat uh, back after a charter. And I asked her, we just had a few dates, and, and I asked her to come down to Greece and, and sail with me, and she did. And so we did this, this one week of a, on, a, on a Sun Magic 44, which was one of the, the Genoa boats uh, active at the time. And it, you know, at the time it felt like we were on a super yacht. It was just the two of us, and and we were having a week sailing there. It was just awesome. Excellent. So, uh, how did you get wind or how did you get connected? I was going to say all wound up in the BBIs. How did you get connected to the BBIs? Yeah, so that's uh, another good question. Well, so BBIs has always been like a, 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 you know, like a tropical dream for you know from a Swede up, you know, up in the cold. Uh, almost Arctic, Arctic uh, area of the world and, and uh, the Caribbean in general. And I understood early on that, that that's, let's say, that that's pretty much the, the holy grail of, of the charter industry. So um, we started our business over in the BVI. I think it's now seven years ago. And, uh, and, 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 and I, I, a few years before, one year before I did some, some research and I, I you know, came out, got a boat for a week. And, and, and to me, the BVI is really the best sailing area in the world. Oh, it's, we agree. It's just awesome. Yeah, absolutely. So you started, started Navigari Yachting, or sorry, Navigari Yachting in, in the BVIs, and it, you started it seven years ago. It didn't start in Sweden or any of your, your other nice listed loca locations you have, like, is it? Oh, oh yeah, so, so sorry about that. It's so okay. So... Founded the company uh, 20 years ago. So, so founded the company back in 2001, and and at the time we were uh, located in, in Greece. Was actually, let's say, due to that that kind of 
background I had. We started in Greece. Okay. And, and, um, but, but um, now, so coming up to, I think this is 2014 when we started in, uh, in the BVIs. And, um, and that's where I, I, I uh, again, because it's just, it, it's just, it was just a dream to, to be able to, to get one of our own bases in, in such a beautiful spot. Yep. And you guys have how many locations now worldwide? Or how many so we got, destinations? Currently, we got 10, 10 sailing uh, locations around the world. Man. Yeah, I was, just, I was looking at the website, and there's a lot of uh, bucket list locations on there. Yeah. yeah, and you know what? I, it's it's I, you know we're opening up a new destination in in the Seychelles uh, this winter, and and hopefully we're also going to open something up. It's it's actually brand smoking new, but we're also probably going to open up something in the Maldives later this year. Really? And and um, yeah, and it, it's 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 two really exciting areas. I've sailed I've sailed them both, and and but it, it's a good and, and they're beautiful in in their own different ways i can you know i can spend an hour speaking about it so i won't do that but i i, I can say that if i compare those to the bvis i am still a big big fan of the bvis because the bvis is kind of the, the kind of the perfect microcosmos for for a charter guest because you have it all at your fingertips um you have the beauty of the islands you have the beauty of the you know the nature the sea and, and all of it and you can go to deserted spots where you, you kind of get off the beaten track in the BVIs. But you also have just around the corner, you have a, a great uh, beach bar and there is some other, you know, great folks on the beach that you can hang out with and you grab a painkiller with and you, you know, it's so much interaction. It's so much good people traveling. So it's just, for me, that's just the greatest combination. Yeah, no, we, we agree. It's you can you can have the isolation if you want the isolation. You can go be part of the the beach beach bar, you know, beach scene if you want to be part of that. It's uh, it's a great location and and obviously it's a it's a top place for people to go and charter uh, not only bare boats but uh, crude boats as well. Yeah, thank so, you very much, very so, much. So, what other services does uh, Navigari uh, offer? Well, so what, what we do is, I mean, we, we do charter boats, obviously, but we, we also, of course, sell boats. Um, so, so many of these boats, actually, all Navigara boats is, is by, in some way uh, owned or financed by uh, somebody. So some, some sailor who wanted their own boat, uh, that's, uh, that's what we are, we are made up on, of. Um, but then, of course, outside of, of that, we, we, do, um, we do all the maintenance, we do all the service, of course, all the turnarounds, so all the, all the logistics around, around the charter and, of course, the logistics around bringing in a new boat. So every year we bring in another 60, 70 new boats around the world. So that's a pretty big, uh, big part of the job as well. Right. So the maintenance. Now, you all have done some interesting things to kind of uh, bring technology into the charter space from a check-in and uh, process. Can you talk a little bit about uh, what you guys have done from a technology standpoint? Um, yeah. Yeah. Hey, Ty, I'm so glad you mentioned that because that's that's one of the features. So, because I, I, uh, I, you know, I was in IT uh, before I, so I, I finally managed to, to get through my university studies and then I went into IT before I, I, I got into to, uh, to starting Navigar Yachting. So and and those those years has really you know I got a I got a, just a, a decent understanding of of of, of, uh, of how how uh, how fundamentally the the software industry works and how how uh, how we could we could uh, accomplish a lot of stuff by by integrating it to to our current business. So what what we have done I mean we have a lot of of different IT infrastructure that is helping us, but. But which is the, the core of everything in our world um, is a software system where where all the maintenance is is recorded. We also use it for a check in and check out. So the the base manager, the base guy, he he has an, an app on his phone where he that he checks the boat when when it when it comes back, and and the, the client uses um, the software also to to check check in the boat when 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 they arrive at the base, and. The, the whole thing is is great because they, they, they of course it's all instantly transferred to the to the back end um, kind of browser based uh, uh, software where 
uh, both um, the base manager can can get an, 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 an real time update of what's going on in the boats, but also uh, management can follow it, and and ultimately boat owners can follow what's has been done with their boats. So it's 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 a great system, and it really works well when you are geographically distributed as we are. Yeah, yeah, I can see as a boat owner the peace of mind of being able to see exactly what's going on with your boat and the maintenance and everything else. So no, it's, uh, Bob, Bob and I have had our own little experience with uh, IT. Uh, now I, I would say uh, uh, running a charter company is a whole, a whole lot, uh, sounds like a lot more fun than staying in IT. Uh, <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah. It, it, I, I think I think really that I, I probably got the best job in the world. Um, you know, I get to work with with what is my my hobby, and and I get to work with all these people who are uh, making their own their own dreams come true. It's it's pretty amazing, actually. That's that's awesome. I think that's part of the reason why Bob and I uh, started Bodie Ball. <laughs> we wanted an excuse to uh, do something similar. So uh, yeah, the difference yeah. was is we had no idea about IT. So. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta use your help early on <laughs> well you seem to have fixed it pretty well so you guys are doing great there with uh it's 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 a fantastic help and and and, and you know it's uh it's amazing that that um uh how how much uh, positive comes out of being able to to pre-book uh your slot so that you know that you can get into a certain place at night just you know helps you relax all day and and makes your planning so much easier yeah we you know that was really one of the few stresses we had uh when we were down there was just uh finding a mooring ball getting one um and it cut into our time that we could spend on the water so um yeah no it's been a it's been a fun project and we've enjoyed it but this isn't about us this is about you so uh <laughs> one of the other questions i had for you is you know what are one of the biggest, what's some of the biggest changes you've seen over the last 20 years in the uh, charter industry? Yeah, that's, a, that's another good one. So we, we came into to the industry where uh, the, the German manufacturer Bavaria was doing, uh, they had a new model Bavaria 44, and that boat was priced something like 30% below the equivalent Beneteau boat. So with that, we were getting a ton of those boats and we were killing the market. And, but they were all monohulls. They were smaller, let's say, I mean, smaller, but let's say 45 feet monohulls uh, up to maybe 50 feet. And, and, and today, uh, what we sell, uh, both in new boats and, 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 and a big portion of what we sell on, on what we rent in charter is catamarans. Yeah, right. and, and so that's the, that's the really, really exciting change. And I think that the, the, and not just that it's just a different kind of boat, but of course, it's so much more comfort on the catamaran. And, and I think that with that increased comfort, we, would, we are reaching so many more clients that believe, uh, feel that that's the, that's the way they want to go on holidays. With, with the monohals, it was you, you needed to be a little bit more uh, adaptable to, to, to less, you know, less square foot and, and maybe you would share the, 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 the bath with somebody else. It, it was just a different, different experience. Today, you know, you get your own bedroom, you get your own, uh, you get your own bath, uh, you get plenty of space uh, on the boat itself, There's several different zones. It's, it's just, just more comfortable today. Yeah, everybody kind of, um, when they look at the charter boats, I think most people instantly see the catamaran as a um, more of a vacation platform and somebody looks at a monohull as more for the um, true sailor at heart. Um, somebody that wants to get out and sail and be a little bit more sporty and have to work a, the boat a little bit harder and just be an yeah. all around better boat person. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I'm yeah. speaking from my background. But, but we actually like our wives to join us. And, yeah, so uh, catamarans is the way we go. Um, <laughs> Yeah, that's not. it, isn't it? I mean, and, 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 and you know, even, even I mean, I'm like you guys. I mean, I, I've been, you know, I've been growing up with, with the, with the monohulls and, and it's, it's a lot of fun. And when you, you know, once you, once you get the boat healing and you get the full self set of sails up and, and you just, you know, just, just flying, it's, it's an amazing feeling. So, and, 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 and you, you don't have, well, you can have similar, but, but not that often on, on the catamaran. So, so of course it is a different sailing experience, but, 
but I mean, between us, how often do we really say like that? And particularly when we are on a family holiday, I mean, right. it doesn't it doesn't really happen much. So, so even you know, even myself, I just you know, I enjoy the camera and so much more because of all the other time you spend just hanging out with friends, you know, chilling out on the flybridge or you know, sundown, sundowner in the cockpit, whatever. It's just a so much better expo- overall experience. Oh yeah, so. Keeping on that, what do you think it's going to uh, the charter industry is going to look like in ten years, or what were the charter boats going to look like? Are they going to go to a, um, a more electric based fleet? Yeah, so yes, for sure. So I, what I what I what I think we will see is it, the, the trend of the catamarans will be even more, let's say, and and the boats will be become bigger and bigger. I mean, that's that's also clear uh, clear trends in industry. But and and as you say. For sure, we will see much more electrical because the the electrical engines uh, fit so well with the sailing boat. So, uh, the, I mean, for a power boat, I think we will have to wait for a bit longer. But since we are mainly in the business of of, of renting sailing boats, I think it's going to be a pretty rapid process over the next few years. So, there's going to be a lot of electricity in uh, in our industry soon and on bigger boats. So you mentioned bigger the, bigger, the bigger boats, the bigger cats. Um, where are they going to stop? Right now, the moorings are spaced for um, most, of, si- most yeah. of them are spaced for a 60 foot boat for the swing of a 60 foot boat. Um, are, do they do you think they cap it at 60 or are, there, are people going to be on 65 and 70 foot cats and then dropping anchor? Oh, I mean, for for the moorings. So, I mean, I, I think I think what, what already when you are up, I'm, what I'm what I think I'm talking about is that the average size cat we are renting today is probably more like a 45, 42, 45 feet cat, okay. gotcha. and I'm thinking that that's going to be increased. So, probably what we will see is you know you're going to see 50, 55 feet cats, yeah. uh, but I'm I'm not so sure that is just going to continue on. And then, you know, another 10 years, it's going to be 80 feet because there is also, of course, you know, the, the whole cost uh, 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 relate ratio between, oh, yeah. between. So, so uh, I, I would, I would imagine that, that, you know, those, those 60 feet you, is probably going to get you pretty far on, on, you know, the average size boat. Yeah. Yeah. I would like to be on a 60 foot cat. <laughs> <laughs> me too man i think yeah. the, on the flip side right is uh, a lot of times when you're going down and chartering a boat it's uh, a lot of times maybe larger than what you're used to captaining and so at what point is too big too big and uh, not feeling comfortable so yeah I, I think you know somewhere in that range you know 45 50 feet is uh is uh is a good range yeah it's do it that's mm-hmm. that size is doable by most people with any um any experience just an ounce of experience probably <laughs> and if we're talking about ourselves that would be double of what we probably have but it, i think a 50 foot boat is in uh, a cat they're just easy easy um to maneuver um under power and they're they're not that um the learning curve isn't as steep as it is on a mono hull if you're sailing so that's it that's yeah. it and, and i mean again the bvi is great and, uh, and that other aspect of the bvi that you not really you don't really have to dock yeah. these boats yeah. much so you know you grab your your boring ball and that's about yeah. it so much much easier maneuvering as opposed to i mean if you sail a week in the mediterranean i mean you're going to be docking all the time so right it's it's it's, it's very different so what are you looking forward to then in the next coming years besides kidding COVID (laughs) over (laughs) besides the the obvious one (laughs) what what i'm what i'm looking forward to professionally now what what i'm uh, what what i'm excited about doing yes 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 yeah um so well so we're looking at at growing our our fleets quite quite dramatically and and in the roadmap we are we have to get to about 20 20 bases uh within the next three years so we're, we're looking at quite a number of new destinations uh in the meantime but if i if let's say considering the bvi which we consider as uh, the most or at least one of the absolutely most important sailing areas in in in, in, in our uh, in our world we want to grow uh, the bvi as much as we can so we we are 
we are currently at around uh, 50 boats in the BVIs, and uh, and and we would we would gladly see that that amount increase to uh, at least 100 uh, within about the same time frame. Wow, that would be outstanding. Absolutely yeah. outstanding. If you need test clients to go to these new places, <laughs> all the time, all know. the time, Bob, <laughs> all the time. Yeah, let us know. We'll, we can we can free up our schedules a little bit. <laughs> well, and and as we're wrapping up here, Jasper, this is more maybe a, a more personal question. But what do you what do you want your legacy to be? What do you want to be remembered by? Oh man, um, for me, <laughs> that's that's a, <laughs> that's a big question. That's a big question. And not, not that I think too much about that, but I, what I can tell you is, I feel um, I feel very responsible for for all our charter clients and and all our boat owners, and and we have been, and as you know, you know, boats they break down all the time. It's hard to it's hard to to make it problem free, and and we will never be problem free, but. But we, we, we try very hard to, to give a good service and a good quality. And, and, and I, really, I really hope that, that we could be remembered for, for being a, a, a premium supplier of, 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 uh, of travels, of, of, of charters. Because that's, that's what we're really trying to do. And, and I believe that, you know, we, we, we don't have, we, we, today we work a lot. We, we are, we're all, you know, it's running too much in our daily lives. So, once we get on our holidays, it's important that things is working out. And if they're not working out, at least people are caring and trying to fix whatever problems there are. And that's right. what we're trying to do. Yep, yep. No, I think um, if, if a client has a problem and it's addressed properly and the people that are addressing it are literally concerned about it, it goes a long way for the uh, positive experience for somebody on a charter boat because they do spend a lot of money on a boat and it is, it's, it's a, a time commitment to get down to the BVIs and go sailing for a week and you definitely don't want to feel like you're getting shrugged off if you have an issue. There you go. Yeah, yep. that's it. That's it. So that's super important to me. So I'm, I, I, uh, that's what we're trying very hard every day to do that. Awesome. Well, we, we would encourage everybody uh, listening to this and our user base to definitely uh, consider Navigari next time they're heading down to the BVI and or uh, many of the other locations uh, around the world. We, we want to look into those ourselves. And uh, But Jesper, we really appreciate you taking the time, uh, sharing a little bit about your experience and uh, getting Navigari started and your, uh, your vision of the future. All right. Well, Ty and Bob, thanks so much for having me on. It's uh, you, you, you guys done a great job of, of getting volleyball up there. And, and we hope to see you guys in, in many more locations, uh, many more of our locations soon, as, too, as well. Sounds good. Thank you, Jasper. Thank you. All right. Thank you, guys.